Did you or did you not? Were you the, were you the voice in the film? Yes. Uh, of High Noon? I yes. thought so. I, I was thinking of it. Yeah. Was that your campaign song? <laughs> <laughs> it's a silly question. Well, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't really have one. I don't suppose yeah. a campaign song. I saw some. Uh, I saw an article about the campaign, and most of the places where you appeared, you they asked you to sing, or you did sing, or both. They usually ask for a song that I recorded many, many years ago, mm -hmm. an old folk song of the South called The Ballad of the Bow Weevil. And that's what I usually sang uh, to finish. In the early part of the campaign, we didn't do any singing, but later when we had the music with us, I usually sang one or two for them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you look back over the campaign now, do you, do you have any reason to know why you might have won or why you lost? <laughs> well, I guess I must have dropped a stitch somewhere. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't suppose it, if you lose, you don't. Uh, you. Uh, we aimed our campaign at the anti-Gore vote. That's the incumbent senator. So we did. Yes, uh, hoping that uh, the Democrats would cross over and vote for us. Mm -hmm. But about 10 weeks before the election, a very fine young man entered the Democratic primary, and he was a moderate, as I was, the middle of the road. As a matter of fact, I think we have the same position on every issue. And he uh, ran very well. But when I knew that he had entered the race, the Democrats didn't have to leave their party to vote against uh, Senator Goa and to vote the uh -huh. moderate uh, philosophy, so I think that hurt us a great deal, and uh, just uh, didn't get enough votes. They didn't uh, follow the old-time democratic philosophy of uh, vote and vote often the same day, you know, they didn't do that. <laughs> and yeah. that, uh, that alone can beat you. Yes. Your opponent was very wealthy, as I understand, Brock was his name, wasn't it, the man who... Oh, yes, uh, very beat. wealthy. We didn't... Now, uh, if you're not, how do you, how can you compete? Did you find that you were at a terrible disadvantage? Well, yes, we didn't uh, get the money. We didn't uh, have the money. Mm -hmm. It takes so much. I think that's one of the tragedies of uh, American politics. It takes yeah. uh, so much money to run. You have it here in this state, possibly it takes more than any other. But it takes a lot in, in any state, and we didn't have it. We had no billboards, and we had not much TV right at the finish. We had some TV. But uh, we just uh, went to the, to the people with the country music artists helped us. Very grateful for that. But you need so much money, which we didn't have. Mm -hmm. And uh, Do you think being called Tex had anything to do with... Uh not winning in Tennessee. <laughs> Did well, you think Ten of Tennessee? Tennessee is the mother of Texas. We never have discovered who the father was, but uh, <laughs> so, the states are very, very similar. Uh -huh. I mean, the political philosophy, and it was not until uh, a friend of mine, as a matter of fact, he and I went to law school together at the University of Texas. Ralph Yarbrough was defeated in the primary in Texas that the young, very fine candidate, Hudley Crockett, entered the Democratic primary. But the, Ralph Yarbrough and Senator Gore voted similar on most issues. But the people are very similar. The two states are very much alike. I don't, uh, I don't think that hurt any. I, I don't think so. Possible. How, how long did it take to make 85 movies? <laughs> Well, I was out there about 15 years making those pictures, I suppose. I lived there 30 years, but... Uh, How long did a film take 50... in those days, a cowboy film? Well, some of them around eight days. Some of them seven days. That long? <laughs> it's uh, kind of an A picture. Uh, we... You had... You prepared them uh, maybe a couple of weeks, you know. You pre-recorded all your songs. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
maybe work the script over a little, but we didn't waste much time once it started. <laughs> you ever do a whole movie in one take? Uh, okay. Yeah, well, it wasn't quite that. But you see, those are the people, the people that made the B pictures, mm -hmm. uh, and the people that uh, made the little westerns, the kind of pictures we made, those were the people in the early days of television that they called upon because uh, they didn't... Uh, like the pictures Ms. Lancaster was in, maybe they'd take a scene and they'd take it over and over. Yeah. If we took a scene and it was right, we went to the next scene. And uh, those are the people that made the early TV pictures, the producers and the directors of the, yeah. of the B pictures, which move rather rapidly, yeah. and the little westerns. When we come back, I want to ask if the rumors were true about Hopalong Cassidy. We'll be back after this message from our local station. Mr. Ritter, were you a, a cowboy, actually? Well, I was born on a cotton farm in East Texas, but we had uh, yeah. livestock of all kinds. It's, uh, I was born around livestock. Now it's mostly cattle instead of farming, but it's in the rural part of East Texas in Panola County. I was born way out in the country, farm and ranch. So you didn't have to learn to ride to make cowboy movies? No, I knew how to stay on, I thought, but I, I stayed on most of the time. But, uh, I've heard that writing in movies is very dangerous and that some of the best writers who write in private life will not do the things they're asked to do in movies because there have been a lot of people hurt that way. You, well, the posse, the posse goes pretty fast sometimes. Uh, it, a lot of actors, for instance, from New York that come out and, you know, in those days that said they could ride. Yeah. When you have to ride at a full gallop and shoot a gun, well, some of our the people were shot in the face with the powder burn. But it is a little different. It's rather hard all day long. You usually shoot all the long shots first, and it's pretty hard riding. You have to, you have to be able to ride to, to work in them. Did you ever get bitten by a horse? Not bit, but bit at. Uh, I was, a horse tried to bite me once, and people say, you're crazy, horses don't bite. Well, you know, I my, may be crazy, but they do bite, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. My horse was uh, a stallion. Yeah. And uh, as, they, as they grow older, they get what we call kind of, they get a little rank. And a lot of times, so he's a high school horse. And if I was working him on the stage, if he didn't want to work too well, he would kind of make out like he's going to bite you. Horses bite you, certainly. Yeah. They, they, don't, they never tell that about horses. They never show the horses biting people in the movies. Have either of you ever been bitten by anything interesting? What do you mean by... Uh, well, I just okay. want to know what the hell you're going and kiss a horse for. No, no. You mean bite? Bite is, is bite like... Uh, yeah. So you were kissing the... him or what? You're, you're, you're weird in France. Hey? I just don't know. Uh, no, one more lesson, you'll have that all... Fine. That'll be all, all ironed out. No, you I've been chased by a wild horse, chased, you know, across a field. By a wild horse? Yes, but I was told, and I, is it true that if you put your hand up, they see eight, a horse sees eight times the image of anybody else. So that, something right in its face frightens it. Is that true? It's possibly true. I, I don't know. Oh, I thought it was a little information, <laughs> just the end of the evening, you know? You sound a little skeptical of that. <laughs> If they see eight times what you are, then yes. they'd see a person eight times yes. as big and they wouldn't charge you anyway, would well, they? if they see eight people running, they yeah. run too. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I think I'm in a fly sees a thousand times, doesn't it? I hope a so. A house fly. I do hope so. We will have to do another show on this. Yes. After this brief message from our local station. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ritter, for being here. Thank you, Elsa <laughs> Lanchester. Thank you, Monsieur Delon. Thank you, Monsieur Kevin. And I know that you were nervous, even though you say you weren't. I think it's courageous to come on television. And Matt's witch. I mean, Matt's wits. <laughs> With a weirdo like myself. We will uh, I'll look forward to Borsalino, and we'll see you. Tell Belmondo hello, even though he doesn't know me. We'll see you uh, tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>